All right, let's go to ZBrush and play around here. So I'm going to switch over to a Z sphere. This allows me to just cancel out of the actual object I was in and then import a new object. So you see me do that a lot. All right, I can divide this up. And yes, it does function quite well. I can get some hard edge and some soft edge in there based upon the edge loops that I placed. Things that you cannot do in Blender that you can do in ZBrush. That's where we're kind of looking at here. In ZBrush, we have this many brushes. Okay. In Blender, we only have a few of those. <laughs> and the ones I use all the time are like grab, smooth, and flatten. Maybe uh, layer. I doubt. Sometimes layer produces some funky results. But polish, smooth, grab, and just F draw are probably the ones I use all the time in Blender. But anytime that we need to get more detail than that or a little bit more accurate than that, that's when you have to use ZBrush until you know other programs catch up. And who knows? Okay, so I'm going to just divide this up a little bit, and we're going to do some basic 101 things that I kind of tend to do all the time. First off, know that there is curves in here, and there's lassos and masks. Okay, so the masks are the main thing that I use all the time. So let's go to the lasso tool. Since we developed this geometry in the very center of the document, I can turn X symmetry on, and you can see the symmetry point works quite well. Okay, if it does not, you can always go to transform and hit set pivot, and you notice that it was just a little off in the other vertices or the other axes. So just get in the habit of hitting set pivot. If you ever want to clear it back, you can just hit C pivot. Okay, using the mask tool, uh, hold control. Then I can just go like this and produce some kind of shape. Anytime that I want to clear the shape, I can go over here to masking and I can say clear. There's a couple other things that you have to know. Notice that the resolution of the mask is very low right now. Okay, And if I sharpen the mask, it will sharpen some, sure, but it's still based upon your geometry. In other words, it should already be pretty sharp if you want good detail. If I want it sharp, I can hit divide a few more times and then cool control and you'll notice it's a little bit sharper. That underlying sharpness states that I do have enough resolution to pull tricks off. So at subdivide level 9, Let's take and inverse this. And let's go to deformation and just go inflate and we'll type in a negative five here. Okay, that was a pretty weak inflate. So now that I know my base, I'll put uh, negative 20. Okay, so that's pretty cool in the fact that we can inset something that accurately. Now there's also a different inflate and deflate, so that one I use all the time. But let's clear that out. And you know what? Let me also show you that the fact that... So this doesn't have UVs. Remember, I, I skipped that UV process. But if we want UVs on the object, we go in here to UV map. And for seeding out masks and stuff, I always hit 4096. That being said, we don't have to have 4096 as far as texture wise. But as far as saving masks are concerned, I always go to 4096 and then hit GUV tiles. Okay it'll ask me to lower my resolution please so 
go to subdivide level one and then I can go down here to GUV tiles. So now I have UVs, they're not very uh, well-rounded UVs, they're just UVs that support very high levels of detail. And if I ever want to save this selection out, I can just go in here to say create alpha. So now I have an alpha of that now selection. Well that's important because let's say I want this area right here to have a different type of texture. Several ways I could do that. There is this nice little one I use sort of often. It's called Embose. Oops. Hmm. And sometimes you got to use the mouse to click areas. And since there's no E, it goes a crashing back to the menu. So it's not called Embossed. It's something else. Let me look for its little tiny icon. If you're very interested in setting up hotkeys and all that is concerned, I would highly suggest going to my YouTube channel and searching out hotkey or Blender and ZBrush stuff. ZBrush, I have a complete series and it shows you how to make like different hotkeys for this. So it's called Fracture, not in Bose. Uh, so I could put a different texture here very quickly. Okay, now if I clear that mask, however, and if I ever want to make it so I can't touch the other geometry in that area, I would have a hard time now. Well, I could just go and what I like to do is switch over to the standard brush first so I don't mess up any of the brushes. That's where the alpha was when I made it. And I can go like this. Mask by alpha. That area is now masked off again. So that's nice that I could save selections out as alphas. Very cool stuff. So now I can hit clear. All right, one I use all the time, and we're just creating different kind of textures in different areas. Really, that's that's what you should concentrate on <laughs> the most. Not sculpting a demon or a perfect female character, but just practicing little tiny things like this it really does help. Let me turn off that. Again, hold control, and I could just mask this area. Because it's on symmetry, it will automatically update and I can add different kind of mask and it will automatically kind of fix itself on the other side. Okay, so that's another way to mask in. Okay, let's inverse that mask and do a different thing this time. This is another type of deflate that I do. So this one is called Balloon Deflate. It's about 12 times stronger than the normal deflate though. So if it was negative 20 on the first one, this one would probably be a negative two. <laughs> and it takes a second. Okay. So let's look at that a little bit, a little bit more. It definitely, definitely takes a little bit longer to do this one. All right, so this is what we got now. So the balloon deflate command is kind of hard to pull off on corners like this. But holding shift I can just kind of smooth that area out. Now another thing is there's different levels of smooth so here's one called blur there's all sorts of different smooths. Tons of them.
Now there's one called Stronger that I use all the time. I like this one. If we want to fix things like this, I can hold Shift now, and it has a very, very strong blur point. Now to fix something like this though, you're going to have to look at maybe going down a couple levels before it will actually do anything. And then you can go back up and then kind of fix it some more. So that's what we have to do if we want to repair areas in ZBrush that have bad pinching or that stuff. We can do that. And another thing that I like doing is using a polish. So you notice that it polishes away and then I can hold shift and kind of fix it that way. So just kind of know you have to go down a couple levels to repair things. And it's a combination of smoothing and polishing. there we go again if I want to put a different type of texture in that area I can let's say I do it a different way this time let's go to surface and hit noise okay noise allows me to put noise in that area and you can see now it has a whole different type of texture applied now what about this it's crawling outside its food group here so how can I fix that well Let's turn off noise and maybe take the mask and sharpen it. Now when I add noise, it won't crawl out. I think the hardest thing in ZBrush is, you know, tiling back and forth into this. Uh, even in Season Pros, you're going to be always looking for something as far as where is the surface palette at. But this is very quick. I hated it at first, but I like the interface now. I think that's what all good ZBrushians say. You know, I hated it at first, but once I got used to it, it was all right. So there we go. There's a different type of texture only in that one area, and I can adjust this curve to create way different textures altogether. And this form of noise generation is very powerful. If I want that pitted look, I can just bring up this curve all the way up. Okay, now I got kind of that embossed look or pitted look. And you can this is what I use all the time for making uh kind of a metal texture. You can see how it's kind of pitted now like rust and we can adjust the scale value. If I only want to keep it in that area, notice if I if I take the mask off, it'll bleed outside. The mask is actually keeping it only in that area. So I'll just apply the mesh. And that way, when I do take off the mask, it will only be in that one area and that's it. All right, and if I want to choose to save that selection again, masking, create alpha. There we go, and I can switch back and forth. Let's clear that. So, just creating some interesting shapes here. I don't even know what I'm making, but just teaching a little bit of ZBrush at a time here. Okay, so since the alpha exists on this brush, you'll notice that it has no polishing value whatsoever. Let's undo that. So I would always clear off the alpha, and now I can polish with it. Just know that that alpha states what the brush is actually doing. Let's do some other little things that I do all the time. Uh, let's go to layer. I do this one. And if I wanted to create bolts, I go to drag rack. See, I can make some cool rivets. All 
All right, in the next video, I'll do some more damage to this thing, and then we'll go back to Blender and see what we can do.